Now, a slew of arrests on corruption charges of late and more to come, we are told, on Thursday. Has all of us feeling finally we're seeing not only a real breakthrough on state capture criminality, but also the revival of the National Prosecuting Authority. At the same time, the debate around who the NPA reports to has come up again. Shamila Batoy, who runs the NPA, doesn't want to report to the Justice Ministry and favours the same sort of independence that Chapter 9 institutions such as the Public Protector have, so they'd report to Parliament. Let's discuss the pros and cons now with Advocate Paul Hoffman of Accountability Now. Good evening. Thanks so much for your time. I've read an article where... Um, even though it's best practice to have independence for a prosecuting authority, and it's something that happens all over the world, you think it might not be achievable in South Africa. Tell us why. Well, the, the Constitution, as it is uh, constructed at the moment, uh, gives final responsibility for the prosecution service to the Minister of Justice, and the Minister of Justice has to concur in prosecution policy, but prosecution policy is actually made by Shamila Batoy in her capacity as National Director of Public Prosecutions, and then on the other side, the accounting officer of the National Prosecuting Authority is the Director General of the Department of Justice. So the, the NPA, the prosecuting authority, ends up neither fish nor fell in the compromise that was worked out at the last minute before the Constitution was finalized 26 years ago. And uh, it, it's, it's encouraging that Shamila Batoy wants to assert her independence by insisting on reform that will have uh, the NPA reporting to Parliament rather than to the executive, and indeed by uh, dissociating herself from the executive. But it is also possibly sinister to, to do it this way around because the current operational capacity of the NPA is so hollowed out and so sabotaged by the deployed cadres who are sitting in the ranks of the NPA as to be incapable for many a long year of dealing with grand corruption uh, flowing from state capture in the way that a healthy criminal justice administration can do it. What's really needed is a specialist body to do that. And I'm pleased to say that the NEC of the ANC has worked that out and they have called upon cabinet to establish just such a body. Right, so it would be sort of a separate grand corruption unit, am I right? Yes, the, 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 uh, the best practice way of doing it is to allow the NPA to continue to function under Chapter 8 of the uh, Constitution, but to amend that uh, chapter to, to remove the Department of Justice and the Minister of Justice from any uh, position of authority over the NPA and also to remove the prosecution of grand corruption to the new, um, what we like to call the uh, Integrity Commission, which will, will be uh, a, a Chapter 9 institution that reports to Parliament. So it will enjoy the protection of Chapter 9 status. It will not be possible to close it down like the Scorpions were closed down, and it will be possible to recruit uh, specialists who at the moment, for obvious reasons, are not prepared to, to, to work in the um, compromised NPA that uh, stumbles along as best it can uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, but a lot of operational and structural problems that make it impossible to deal with grand corruption in the way that the people of South Africa deserve to have it dealt with. Don't, if, if the system had been, as Shamila Batoy wants it now, uh, that way all along, in other words, reporting to Parliament as a Chapter 9 institution, very independent, would that actually have prevented the sort of hollowing out of the NPA and the state capture issues that we've seen? Isn't it more about getting, getting the right people in and making sure that they're beyond reproach rather than the systems? Uh, well, 
if if the system for appointments is flawed, then you will get flawed appointments. Uh, look no further than the public protector, who is a, a Chapter 9 institution, and you will know that um, uh, certainly having the right people is uh, a, a, a vital aspect of the matter. But the, the hollowing out that occurred during the Zuma years was enabled by the executive uh, role and control and functions in, in the NPA. And um, that can, can be addressed by taking the Department of Justice, the Minister of Justice, the accounting uh, function away from uh, the executive branch of government and uh, locating it within the NPA. The problem is that the NPA at, 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 at the moment, and this isn't me suggesting it, it's uh, Shamila Batoy telling Parliament, that the hollowing out is such that the saboteurs will continue to disappear dockets and thwart proper investigations uh, for the purpose of protecting those who deployed them for the purpose of uh, ensuring continued immunity for grand corruption. The way around that is the creation of a new Chapter 9 institution that uh, ensures that grand corruption is dealt with in accordance with the criteria that were mm. laid down by the Constitutional Court in 2011. It's a long time ago. Sure. So it's really trying to get uh, the, the, uh, the government and the law on the same page in relation to corruption busting. The NPA has got lots of other things to do with gender-based violence and taxi wars and... Uh, rape, murder, all the rest of it. The, the entire um, criminal justice administration can remain with the new NPA, but the uh, grand corruption, and that needs to be properly defined, yeah. can be carved out for a specialist body. Well, what you're saying makes a lot of th sense. And thank you very much for uh, chatting to us this evening. That was advocate Paul Hoffman of Accountability Now.